The Jim Steins Bridge was conceived as a partnership with the City of Melbourne and the State Government of Victoria to create one of the last links to the Docklands Precinct on the north bank of the river from the Melbourne CBD. I always think there's three critical things you need on a great project outcome. One is you need a client and a brief that is stunning. The second thing you need is a, is a really good design team that works as one. And the third thing you need is a city or a culture that's ready for it. The outcome that we've got looks very simple. It actually looks very clean. And that simplicity can only be achieved by having a lot of thought and a lot of clever design going into it. And it doesn't compete with what's around, which is, which is right, good. It's yeah. a quiet piece of infrastructure that's gone and it suddenly opens up the north of the city you know, right, to the yeah. east. So. Yeah. Mm. The main innovation is just the way the, the actual structure stands up. We have the six metre cantilevered deck that people walk on which is being supported by a curved truss. And those two things lend themselves to wanting to sort of roll forward. And so to make this structure stable, we then created a horizontal catenary and that then gets anchored back to the concrete abutments. And it's those abutments that are big concrete elements, but 100% of those concrete abutments is being, is being utilised. And you can really see the tension that's actually in these elements. I think it's always important, and this bridge has done that, to portray the very things it's solving in its design. Nothing's hidden. Yeah. And I, I think it's incredibly beautiful as a result of that. Yeah. It's a lightweight structure and we wanted it to respond to people. And as you walk along, the bridge actually will, will fill that and then the bridge will then respond back to you. And that, to me, shows that, that there is a communication between user and, and structure. I remember we were talking about lightness and doing more with less mm. and making it a place but also a connecting piece. And I think this idea of lightness and gentleness of touch was the core of the design idea. And what it said about the city was its aspirations were about an appropriate move, not a generic move that could have really mm. gone anywhere. During the construction of the bridge, we had the structural steel elements all prefabricated off-site and each element was then taken individually to site over land. And then once they got to site, they were then craned onto a barge. That barge was then floated downstream, down the river, positioned in roughly the, the right position, which was then lifted up to then marry on to the structure that had already been built. The beauty by which that thing was built is as important as what it is. I'm sure a lot of people don't know the bridge is designed to go underwater. Like a submarine bridge that, you know, right. in the event of flood levels being at a certain height, the water can flow over it. When you take Melbourne and you start all the way at the, the sports precinct and you move right through the city and you get to the precinct down through here and you turn into Docklands and move up ultimately into North Melbourne. That entire waterfront linkage, the one missing piece to it is this bridge. I think we've made that connection between what was a dead end and a new part of the city really much more fluid. But I think what we've done is blend architecture and engineering in a way that the solution to that is a beautiful experience to be on and it tells the story of the city in terms of what we've aspired to in a, in a pure design sense.